Hi everyone, in this video we're going to analyze the performance of a centrifugal water pump using CFD simulations. Now the cool thing is that we're going to use a 3D model which is publicly available, which was designed, printed and tested by the YouTube channel Let's Print. So we'll drop the link in the comments, you can go there and fetch the model yourself, which means you can print it, optimize it and build it yourself and test it. Just watch out that you don't electrocute yourself like they did in that channel. So let's have a look at how we can set up this simulation. So what you can see here is the 3D model that we got from their channel. You can download it via their channel, check the link in our description. And then we're going to use water in this case, and this would be in millimeters. And we want to apply boundary conditions at the inlet and at the outlet. So we don't know what the velocity uh, flow rate is going to be. The only thing we know is that they tested it at 2000 RPM, so we're just going to apply boundary conditions which allow the flow to just find its own equilibrium, let's say in terms of flow rate and pressure drop, given a certain RPM. So I've now set a total pressure of zero at the inlet and a static pressure of zero at the outlet. So the only thing we still need to do is to actually dive inside this pump um, and select the impeller. So the impeller is located over here and we need to set it so that it gets an RPM and this is also the correct rotating direction. It'll sling the water outwards and then this is the increasing gap size which allows the flow to actually reach the exit. And we're going to use the exact same RPM as that they did in their first test which is 2000. At least that's a rough indication. They used a drilling machine uh, so we don't know exactly what the RPM is but this will be a good order of magnitude. Now, because the gap between the stator and the rotor or impeller is quite small, we're going to be using a resolution of 10 million cells, which typically takes around two to four hours. This is a bit conservative. So here we have the pre-rendered results. Uh, so the first thing that we see here is what we call the pressure clouds. This is an indication as to where the flow is uh, losing energy. Uh, and typically this happens around sharp corners like over here, where the impeller actually slides by uh, this uh, small gap here, which is the start of the exit. Um, you can also see that around the sharp edges of the veins, you get flow separation and so on as the impeller moves around. So that's definitely something that you could improve on a real impeller or this is a real one on a, on a redesign, for example. Now, what's interesting or the main goal of our simulation is to analyze what the flow rate would be. So in this case, we get a flow rate of around 0.002 cubic meters per second, which is two liters per second. And this actually matches quite well with what you see when it's filling the bucket, even though that is at 6,000 RPM. Uh, but order of magnitude, this is actually quite comparable. And we also have an exit velocity of 6.4 meters per second. We'll get to that later on, but that also sounds realistic in terms of how far the air or the water is actually shooting out of the system. Now, what we also want to do is have a look at the detailed results. So what I've done here is load results into Paraview. This is an open source data visualization program that allows you to visualize pressure, velocity, and so on, given your data is, for example, in open foam format. So in this case, the transparent model is the static part, it's the housing, and then here I loaded the CFD results of the impeller with the pressure plotted on the surface. Now this is quite interesting. If I hide the housing for a second, what you'll see is that, uh, first of all, the pressure rises as you travel along the radius, which is normal. Uh, this is where your pressure builds up as you move outward and the water gets slung towards the outside here. What's also interesting is that this is the direction of rotation, which means that the front here of these impeller veins are at high pressure and the pressure rises as you go to a higher radius because then the, R, not the RPM, but the local velocity is simply higher. Now at the rear of a vein, you'll see the low pressure because this is actually trailing. This is uh, kind of dragging the water along. You'll also see this, uh, it's not an anomaly. This is because this is close to the exit channel. So if you go back to this one, you see that this is the edge here where the impeller passes by this division between the housing and the exit um, pipe. So that's why you get that local change in pressure there as well. Now we mentioned that the gap is quite small between the impeller and the stator. So we're gonna have a look at the mesh as well. So if I hide the object again, here we can inspect the mesh. So really nice to see that we have a coarse mesh in the middle and that the adaptive mesh refinement is creating a more detailed mesh around sharp edges and around areas where you have difficult flow areas. 
So in the gap here, we can see that we have around three to four cells, which is already okay. It's not too important because this mainly generates friction and is not really contributing to the pressure buildup, which all happens on the inside where we have plenty of resolution. Nevertheless, if you would want to capture this even more precisely, we would recommend going to maybe 100 million cells to get enough uh, cells and resolution in the gap. And here you can again see that the flow, which is turning into a vortex here, gets an extra bit of mesh due to the automatic mesh refinement acting on a gradient of pressure. We also have a slice in the horizontal plane, and this is quite nice to illustrate what is happening with the velocity. So now we're looking at velocity rather than pressure. Uh, so you can see that the water flow actually speeds up as it gets to a higher radius, larger radius. And then because all of that flow is contracting into this exit channel, you can see the speed up here. You can also see that we have a local area of flow separation because the flow actually gets slung outward and curves around this edge and that causes local flow separation. So optimizing this area uh, could also be an interesting opportunity to further improve the system. And then at the exit, of course, we have this widening diameter, which of course uh, leaves the central part with the high velocity water and some static or recirculating water here at the end. Uh, of course, in reality, this would be just the exit of the flow. That was it for this short video on the CFD explanation. Um, now, if we check and compare the results, we can see that in their video, the, the water would shoot up uh, to around one meter in height, which is, which is what we would get as well for the exit velocity of 6.4 meters. Um, we just quickly asked ChatGPT calculate for us. And uh, with an exit velocity of 6.4, you would get a height of around one meter if it's at 45 degrees. If you are working on your own impeller design, uh, feel free to reach out to us. If you have any comments, please drop your experiences in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.